Here is what we're going to learn in this session. This is all about objects and arrays. How to use an object and array as a variable type inside Power Automate. We've already covered the others. We've already covered integers and booleans and strings and floats. And now we're going to tidy up with these last couple objects and arrays. Two of my favorite, actually arrays is really my favorite, but what you're going to learn here is how to manually trigger a flow. We've got a test object here. You've got the data here on the right hand on the left hand side of the screen. We're going to take a piece of that. We're going to put it in a string. I'm building out this test array right here. I'm going to take this test array. I'm going to initialize this variable and we're going to initialize or we're actually going to do a test of what an append to test array looks like. And we're going to cycle through those and see what happens when we do append to string variable. And then we're going to get an output. So let me run this real quick to kind of show you what we're going to learn. And then I'm going to walk you through this step by step so that you can do this on your own and you can dig deep into objects and arrays. Here I have a test object. And the value for that object is set here. I'm going to take a piece of that and I'm going to bring it out here. I'll show you how I do that. We have this test array that I've got right here. Um, this one is just a placeholder for now. I'm just initializing it. We're going to append to that test array some data, see what that looks like. Now I'm going to do an apply to each. And for every one of these uh, that exist in the array, I'm going to append the age here. So I have this test string. And so I'm doing the age comma and then the output string 28, 34, 45, 45. And if we look at the test array, we're going to see 28, 34, 45. And I appended that one again. So I've got two 45s there. So that is what we're going to learn. My name is Dana. We've been digging into variables inside Power Automate. Power Automate is just awesome. I love it. I use it all the time. I use mostly the counterpart, which is logic apps inside Azure. But Power Automate is a great way for you to automate all sorts of things. And in my opinion, it blows Zapier and Make.com and a lot of these other platforms blows it out of the water with its flexibility and its ability to pull data out of sources inside Office 365 like SharePoint and even SQL databases and all sort of, sorts of things. So you can send emails and uh, you can do all sorts of things for triggers and responses here. So let's dig into how do you work with objects and arrays. So let's jump right in with what we already know about using variables. I'm not showing you everything step by step this time because you should have an understanding of how to add these variable objects on your own by this point. So I have my manually trigger a flow here and I have a test object. And what I have in here for test object data is name, Alice, age 28, department HR. These are key value pairs. Name is the key. The value associated with name is Alice. Age is the key. The value is 28. And you see that's an integer, right? No quotes. Name, department. Uh, I'm sorry. Key, department, and the value is HR, right? So key value pairs. Those are all inside wrapped into this object. Now, let's say I want to pull one thing out of that object. Let's say I just want the test object name. So I, here I've initialized another variable. So this test object is just initializing the test, uh, the object uh, as the type, doing test object, and then pasting this data in here. And then down here, I have another initializing. And this one is a string. And I called it test object name because I'm going to get the, the name from the object. So just trying to be descriptive here. And now I'm going to go to function and dynamic content test object. And I want to reference the name. So I'm just going to do that. I'm looking at this question mark, square bracket, single quote, and then the name inside here. And what should happen is I should just be pulling the name from the test object right here. Test object, right, name Alice. So we should see Alice come out in the results here. So I'm just going to go ahead and manually test this. And as always, I just go through these steps. Um, it's really, it's really easy. I'm going to skip those steps in the future, but you just saw them. So basically I'm just using test and run it manually and clicking. Okay. Or basically run at the bottom, right? So test object down here. Look at that value is Alice, just exactly what we want. Now let's make the example 
just a little more complicated. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to trick this out to have an array in here. And I want to do that. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm using this as now my key. So my key is now employee one with this information and then employee two with that information and employee three with this information. So I'm kind of taking it to the next level. And if objects are confusing to you, <laughs> they're confusing to me too. I don't, I really would rather use an array. We're going to get to an array in just a little bit here, but let's actually do this with now an object. So now I'm going to come in here to this variable and I have test object name. Well, that doesn't work anymore because test object name that does not exist at the root level in this object. There is no name. So what do I do? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do employee one name, but let's do it for this example. Let's use employee two. So let's say employee two and we want to pull whatever this value is. So employee two and we're going to say employee two name here. So if I come here now and I say employee two name, we should get Bob. So let's save and test it. And what did we get? We got Bob. Hey, that's great. Perfect. Well, let's keep going. Let's say we wanted to do a for each loop and I'm going to show you the wrong way. Many times you think, oh, I've got an object. I've got data in that object. And now I'm going to do this apply to each, right? So that's going to be found under the controls apply to each. So now if I do this apply to each and I put in here, I choose my function, dynamic content, guess what? There is no content available. I don't have any dynamic content that refers to anything that can go in here in the for each loop. And that is because this right here is an object. This doesn't iterate through like it does for an array. So let's delete that. That doesn't work. And I'm frustrated and I can't figure this out. So I say, oh, you know what? Maybe I should be using an array. So let's initialize an array now. Initialize and let's call it test array. And let's call it an array and test array is the little name on the block. Again, good documentation, self-documentation here just by calling these blocks what they should be to make it descriptive for you. It's going to save you so much time and energy. And now let me grab an array. Let's paste this in here. Let's look for some differences. I'm going to save this. Let's look at the object. The object starts with a curly and ends with a curly. Inside it is the, is the object. Inside the object, we find that we have three different keys, employee one, employee two, employee three. Now you're, you're saying, well, I thought you said name was the key name out. Yes. These are key value pairs. And so is this employee one is the key and the value is this employee two is the key and the value is all of this employee three is the key and the value is all of this. So we have three keys and we have to be careful about referencing the keys. This is where the big difference comes into play here. Look, we've got just at the root level, we've got this, this kind of object here, another object with the same pieces of information in it and another object with the same pieces of information in it. This handles this much better uh, for my for each loop. So now let's make a for each loop. Apply to each is the name of the uh, action I'm going to use here. So apply, apply name, apply to each to each and you'll find that under control. So you can also just search for control and then look for see more and you're going to find apply to each. And here, if I do apply to each and I choose function and let's do dynamic content, why, I'm not sure why it's showing the object still. Well, with, with that showing, let's, uh, let me show you the test object. So let's actually try it with test object since that is showing up. I want to show you the wrong way. So test object, save. And basically I'm saying for every test object, do this. So let's do test 
And here we go, we have an error. Does not like object here. It says the execution of template action apply to each failed. The result of the evaluation of the for each expression is an object. The result must be an array. So perfect. Let's go back here. Let's get rid of that object and let's go back to the array. Test array. Add. Save. I'm not even putting any action in here yet. All I'm going to do is test it and run it. And I should see this run three times. Now, here is something very important. Dealing with variables inside loops can kind of get tricky. So I always do this. Click on this, apply to each, go to settings, limit the control to one. You absolutely want to do this dealing with variables. Make sure that you don't have some sort of race condition where one in the apply hits, gets finished faster than others and maybe changes a value, changes a condition, something, right? Now, in this example, probably, probably pretty safe, but I say overall, that is a very good practice to have is to make sure that that apply to each is limited to run one at a time. It's going to make things run a little slower, but that's okay. It's going to, it's going to force it into a linear steps. Do this, then this, then this. Go to the next one. Do this, this, this. So that's what we want. Let's go ahead and test it. And boom, apply to each. One of three. Guess what? There's no actions. We didn't put any actions in here. So uh, let's put an action in here. Let's do a couple things. Let's do one. Let's call a variable. We're going to initialize a variable called output. And this is going to be a string. So all I want is an output. Let's do a string variable. Initialize. Append. We're going to call it append to string. Let's even be more specific. Let's call it append to string names. Name. Let's call it a string. And let's leave it blank on initialization. But then in this apply to each, remember it's going to cycle through these. Let's go ahead and insert a step. Let's use append to string variable. So here we just declared a string. We didn't actually do call this an, a type of append. We just did append to string with a type of string. And down here what I'm doing is I'm going to say append to string. Uh, we're appending to a string variable. And let's say add name to string and let's do function dynamic content now we're going to scroll all the way down to this list now you think oh i just want to use these variables up here no that's not what you want to use you want to use what's going into the for each loop so i'm scrolling down here and i'm going to say current item and it says items apply to each well if you remember what we had we had name age and department. So we're going to do name. See what I just did here? Well, let's put that inside single quotes, do it properly. I'm just putting a question mark, which is a qu like querying. I'm querying this string to find name. And when I find name, I want to append it to this and update. And let's also separate them by a comma, just so we have each name separated by a comma. Well, that's all great, but we also want to see what this output looks like. So let's go variables, set variable, output, and let's just set the output to what that append, or what that, um, what that append to string name ends up producing for us. Boom, just do that, save. So this one down here, and by the way, I did not. Uh, name that block very well here, but I've got Alice, Bob, and Charlie. That was our output. It went and found the name for each of them. And we can actually cycle through this apply to each statement here. We see the first one, Alice, comma. Next one, Bob, comma. Charlie, comma. Alice, comma, Bob, Charlie, uh, Bob and Charlie, right? All with commas in between them. Perfect. That's great. So let's do something else here. Let's rename this output. Let's just call it set output just to make that a little bit nicer hit save and what i'm also going to do 
is I'm going to take this test array and let me uh, add something to this. So I'm going to make this instead of three, let's, let's make it four. So what would happen if I took one of these right here? Let's take this guy right here, Bob. Now notice I'm just taking uh, the curly brackets and inside the curly brackets, I'm not taking the comma. Just co I'm just going to copy that and let's do add action. Append to array, append to test array, and paste it here. Okay, so what's happening now is I have this test array being set to this, and down here I'm appending it uh, with this. And because I'm appending it, we, what we should end up with the apply to each here, which is calling test array, we should end up with four. So let's save and test it. And what do we get? Alice, Bob, Charlie, Bob, because Bob's what we pasted in there again, right? So the append here included Bob. So there you have it. That's just working with objects and arrays, very basic level here. So there you have it, working with objects and arrays. Once you start to wrap your head around objects and arrays, there's some really cool things that you can do with them. You can take arrays, you can filter them out. You can So if you wanted to filter out, I don't wanna show where name equals Bob or I only want to show where name equals Alice. You can do some things like that. You can also join arrays together to make a larger array. Very practical when you're doing API calls that are maybe only give you 100 at a time, but you want to combine them into one, then you can do things like that. Very powerful stuff. Using this with the apply to each really just adds power to the ability to automate long, manual, laborious tasks, make your life a lot easier. My name's Dana. Please leave a comment. Let me know if there's something that you would like me to show you with Power Automate. I'd love to dig into it and help solve a problem for you. Thank you. Have a good day.